and prepared by Brian, you will get a taster of how the early old Cornwall meetings would have been, and perhaps should still be. Five old Cornwall, 100th anniversary meeting. This evening we commemorate a particular afternoon just over 100 years ago when they were sold to see that a new society might be formed that would remember St. Ives and Cornwall for its past, present and future. St. Ives Old Cornwall Minute Book. First written report, January the 21st, 1920. Minutes of the meeting held January the 21st in the council chamber at three o'clock. It was presided over by the Mayor, Mr. J. Daniel. Present, Mr. and Mrs. Jenner, Mr. and Mrs. R. Morton Nance, Mrs. Podmore, Mr., Mrs. and Miss Truella, Miss Vivian, the Miss Gibbs, <coughs> Miss Giles, Mrs. James, and Miss Shack. Drama and plays were a great interest to Robert Morton Nance, who at the time was living in Nantedra. There, he put on a play called Duffy in St. Ives. As we know, he was keen on all aspects of Cornish language and culture, including dialect. So among other things, he wrote dialect plays for the children of Nantedra School. Later, he wrote this particular play and others for adults. And in the preface of his book, this book, The Cledry Plays, Cledry being dialect of Nantedra, obviously, <laughs> He explained the link between this particular play and the formation of this, our own formal society. He said, it was a performance of Duffy at St. Ives that partially led to the formation there in 1920 of the first Old Cornwall Society. And so, in time, to the Federation of Old Cornwall Societies, 1924. And finally, to the Cornish Corset, 1928. So, now we know what some of our family members were doing in those days. They were performing dialect plays based on Cornish folk stories. In Nancy's own words, and the subtitle of this book, Drolls of Old Cornwall for Village Acting and Home Reading. <laughs> so it seems fitting this year that we should revive a very slimmed down version of this play, Duffy. Morton Nance did not invent it, he didn't claim to have invented it. It is clearly based on the folk story, fairy story, um, Rumpelstiltskin. But he gave it a local setting and brought it to life for the children and adults of 1920. So, Duffy by Robert Morton Nance, Mordon as he was known, his bardic name. Our heroine, this very gracious young lady here, <laughs> is Duffy. A pretty and light-hearted girl who enjoys singing and dancing and can't see the point of learning to knit or spin <laughs> when she could be out having fun. However, the local squire needs a spinner and a knitter, so Duffy rashly claims to be an expert in both those in order to get three boarding lodgings in his comfortable home. Now, faced with a spinning wheel that she doesn't know how to use, Duffy is beginning to regret lying about her skills. However, help is coming in the shape of a cunning elf. Enter cunning elf. I can't get the bang of this darn thing which I've never seen. If only someone could help. A clever little bucker, perhaps. <laughs> I think you called me. Me, sir? No, sir. I never seen you before, let alone call me. Anyway, I don't know thy name. I heard you, and here I am. <laughs> St. 
St. Ives Times, February the 13th, 1920, report of the February the 11th meeting. St. Ives Old Cornwall Society. There was a fair attendance at the public hall on Wednesday night in connection with the above. The mayor, Mr. J. Daniel Jr., presided. Which change succeeds change in modern St. Ives seems as though the law of averages has compelled the town to make amends for its centuries what might be seen stagnation, like feverish and undue haste for so-called improvement. Hotels were starting to realise our family holidays were all, all the rage. Very few cars then at this time, and people tended to come on the trains. Shine Dray, St. Ayer, sadly no longer. York House boarding establishment called itself the premier guest house. Ed Mulder House. The Corfu Hotel, Mrs. S. Ramsfield. That was probably Woodside or the very large house. Slide weather ashore, sky now is clearing, the rain is no more. Fishermen waiting, boats ready to go. Tides running freely, the waves ever flow. Heaven, by heaven, around the bay. To shoot nets for the catch of the day. Heaven, cry heaven, around the bay. Sailors are ready to call. And these were no doubt made by Mr. Barber. 
you can see here at the bottom. Um, and Johnny Tucker Barber wrote of Mr. Barber, and William loved the children as he did, and no mistake. And you should see the jaunts that the dear old chap would make. The kids would crowd around him, and he'd turn and twist his knife until the block of wood he carved would seem to come to life. And so a well attended and most thoroughly enjoyed gathering was held on Monday. Music, for the first time, formed the subject of a meeting of the society. Some now seldom heard, but nonetheless the, delight, the less delightful old Cornish Christmas carols, including also the old wassail song, were sung and accompanied with piano and clarinet by musical members in whom the society is fortunately rich. The privilege of being allowed to join in being taken up with enthusiasm. Beside dialect reading that alternated with the carols, some historical notes on Cornish carols were given by Mr. R.J. Noel, and some comments on the special characteristics of the Cornish carol were added by Mr. Colin Williams, who also favoured the meeting with a recital of the newest Cornish carol. The programme, short as it had to be, yet included carols from the type of the Middle Ages to that of the later 18th century, which is more anthem than carol. While the latter lends itself to the choral effects which it was written, it must be allowed that as expressing the true spirit of... Right, a bit of dialect then. So if you don't understand the words, perhaps you'll get the idea of what's going on. <laughs> this is called Give Them a Leg Up. Don't know about you, but silence of me, I haven't voted in elections for years. This time, though, it was a nice bit of weather, so we thought we might as well have a round and vote at the same time. All day long, we were supposed to draw a man, <coughs> these day loads papers, vans, and all of them later. I said to Silas, can't make out a word they're saying. Just waste of breath, looks to me. So after a bit of crouse and a good of tay, we jotted up the polling station, as in the column. Grand name, and up. But my dear life, I want no better than my old caravan that see better days. Outside, a few merry moons is what is enough. I can see him in there. Our number, what our numbers was. Shout Telly, that's our business, said Silas. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to do three years geology in five minutes here. <laughs> now, we're very lucky living in this part of Cornwall, or even part of this country, but especially this area, I'm very interested in minerals. Now, I don't know if you know the three main geological terms, igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. I will explain if you don't know. Sedimentary is when you have, well, for instance, we've had a lot of rain recently, and if you go down west of here and look at the Senate River, it's been quite dirty. And all that dirt really is earth and stuff coming down from the hills and washing out of the sea, and it settles down. But over millions of years, that settlement, settled stuff, becomes rock, sedimentary rock, and so we find fossils and things like that. Now, in Cornwall, we've got very little sedimentary rock, we've got a lot of granite, which is igneous. Now what I want to do, I hope there's no fire alarms around here. Imagine this, these couple of bits of paper are sedimentary rocks laid down in layers under the oceans, okay? Fossils and like that. Then comes a big volcano underneath. So fire comes up from underneath. Enough, it won't make the edit. <laughs> right, what else can you see on that paper apart from the hole? Oh. Yeah. You, see, you can see the darkened bits. It's still glowing. <laughs> now, what's happened in Cornwall? You have a lot of sedimentary rock over millions of years. In comes the granite up through, but then it becomes the igneous rock, right, which is fire. The igneous rock comes up through and burns the sedimentary rock. And the dark rock 
not that is not no longer white paper, is it? It's charred. And that becomes rock called, well, it's called metamorphic rock. It's changed. This is a map of the Land's End area, a geological map of Penrith. Pretty colours. Now you all see from the back the red. Red and pink. All that is granite. If you're up close, not even closer to where I am, look at the green. This originally was sedimentary rock. It's got little M's written all over it. M stands for metamorphic. It's been changed. So we've got, from this one piece of white paper, we've got a hole, which represents the English rock coming up through. We've got the burnt bits, which is the metamorphic rock. And there's something else. I'll give you a clue. If you're at the back row, it's half an hour ago, it's not past it's coming in. <laughs> if you're in the front row, can you smell something else? Burning. burning. And it's the burning part over the millions of years, is the gases and things like that produced when the granite came up, when the English rock came up through forming granite and so on. All the gases and things have cooled down and formed minerals. And that's where you get the tin and the copper and so on. Now, I don't know if you, I'm sure most of you know that we're actually sitting on top of Tremlith mine here, which is actually a copper mine mainly, but had tin as well. But the interesting bit was when the tin and copper sort of didn't run out, but the mine suddenly closed down, they did discover something else. And it's called pitch blend, which is radioactive. And uh, Marie Curie, Heard of Marie Curie. She got a lot of her pitch then from this particular mine. And when I was growing up, nothing was built on this area. And then suddenly, built an infant school, junior school, pleasure <laughs> centre. <laughs> I wish I could bring that Geiger counter up. I think I would say switch on the Geiger counter and see how many people can get out the door fast. <laughs> but, uh... Most of you are familiar with the many old cottages here in the west. Yeah. Two up, two down and a lean to it and back. It's uncertain when mine was built, probably by the miners working that nearby on Trelion Downs. Tide records show it was there well, well built before the early 1800s. We have one very, oh yes, this is a picture of 1905, one of the earliest pictures we've mm -hmm. got it. There's a report of annual meetings of St Ives Old Cornwall Society, 2nd of April, 1941. Mr Nance gave a talk on the work of the Society since its commencement. Idea of Society originated in a collection of dialect words, the late Mr Jenner being present. Mrs James suggested formation of a Society. A public meeting was called. The name? Old Cornwall Society decided upon. This proved successful and the movement grew and spread to other parts of the county. Now, about 22 societies. Looking backward over the 21 years of the life of Old Cornwall movement, the Old Corp St Ives Old Cornwall Society had an interesting hour on Tuesday evening. The coming of age could not be celebrated as it would have been owing to war conditions, but it is hoped that at some future date a special recognition of the event will be made. From the time of its inception, which originated in a very informal gathering, much valuable work has been done and is being carried out <coughs> by its enthusiastic members. I guess some, if not all of you, will know what one of these is. <laughs> you all probably have heard the local term of scantle roofing. Well, this is a scantle. And it's a device that is um, made to, it basically measures the slate. When the slate comes out the ground at the quarries, they came out of whatever size they were, and they all had to be sorted into sizes that could be used in the foot placed on the roof. And, uh, at home, if I've got to do a job in house, I've always got one or two stores, I always find something to do the job. Can I find a slate? So I created a fake slate, <laughs> a plywood, even with a little pin in to hang over the lath. And what they used to do, they pick up the slate, say, what size is that? They'd offer the scandal up to that, and they say, ah, that's a number four, which is a nine inch slate. And they know that, go on a particular part of the roof.